first, here's how a telephone works. You know, my cousin's a telephone. Do you work for the phone company? Uh, please switch to another channel then. A few years ago, I would have been afraid to stand here and discuss how a phone line works, but times have changed. In the old days, the phone company was very picky about what you connected to the line. Now, uh, anything goes. The basic phone was invented by Alexander Graham Bell. And the classic telephone is much the same as his invention. Bell, though, didn't invent the bell. Thomas Watson, his assistant, invented the bell. Another Tom, Edison, invented the microphone that was used in it. And so the phone remained for about 70 years. The telephone company had a good reason to keep it that way, too. It worked, was rugged, and it was compatible with millions of other phones in North America. The difference between these two phones is more than meets the eye or uh, slips off the shoulder. Why can't they do something about that? To understand what's happening to telephones, you have to know about the local loop. The phone companies evolved and changed over the years, moving to electronic switching and fiber optics and a lot of other innovations, but not yet on the local loop. The local loop is the direct wired connection from your phone to the nearest exchange. Now, you might see up to four wires coming out of your phone, but most local loops use only two wires. That saves a lot of wire. The length of your local loop might vary from a few hundred feet to uh, several miles, depending on your location. The same two wires have to carry two-way conversations, signal that there's a call for you, and most important, let the phone company know when you lift the handset. It's a little known fact that I own a phone company. I built it myself. Notice that the only connection to the phone is by these two wires. When the phone's hung up, it isn't connected to the line, and no current flows between it and the phone company. There's no dial tone on the line either. The phone system is ignoring the phone. When you lift the handset, current flows in the loop, and the system finds an active circuit in the exchange and connects you and gives you a dial tone to let you know you can start dialing. Now, if the phone's disconnected when it's hung up, how can the bell ring? Easy. The bell is always connected to the line, but it won't pass the direct current, DC, that's present on the line. It'll only pass alternating current, AC. The alternating current can uh, come from the phone company or from electrical storms. If you live in the country with a long local loop, uh, you know what I mean about electrical storms. Incidentally, there's a reason that the uh, signal rings and then pauses and then rings and then pauses. The pause is there so that the equipment at the phone company can tell if you've picked up your phone yet. Now, the uh, final thing you have to be able to do across the same two wires is uh, reach out and touch someone, as we say in the phone bids. The way to do that for years was the rotary dial. With the handset in your hand, the current flowing. The dial interrupts the current at a rate of 10 pulses per second. The number of pulses is the same as the digit you're dialing. One, two, three, four, so on. The uh, original switch that used to select lines worked something like this one. This is actually part of an old jukebox. The phone company's switch had more ratchets and wipers. It was invented by an undertaker named Alman B. Stroger. His competitor's wife, you see, was the town switchboard operator. And if she'd sent Stroger more calls, they might never have had dial telephones. Now, astute observers are saying to themselves, but by gum, that dial thingy is putting alternating current on the line. How come the bell isn't dinging when I dial? You know, they thought of that. During dialing, a switch right here shorts out the bell. It's known officially as the anti-tinkle circuit. The anti-tinkle switch only shorts the bell in the unit that's dialing. In the country with long local loops, due to a property of long lengths of wire called inductance, dialing tinkle is heard on extension phones. Of course, touch tone dialing's rapidly replacing pulse dialing, but there are still some exchanges that don't understand the tones. By the way, if you want to impress your friends, the proper name for touch tone is dual tone multi-frequency, DTMF. Now, this configuration of phone is rugged, functional, and downright clever. And two astounding features of its design have to be stated. It's not connected in any way to local household power. You can still phone the electric company to complain of a power failure. When it's on hook, it draws no power from the phone company either. Every single component in it is passive. It performs all of its tricks by allowing current to pass when you pick it up, pulsing that current with the dial, then wiggling that same current with speech. It's simple, efficient, elegant. 
couldn't last, could it? It'd be nice to redesign the local loop to take advantage of modern electronics, but that would mean discarding a few million phones. So for now, electronic phones have to do their best to simulate Old Faithful. When the tone's set to pulse, it will simulate the clockwork mechanism of the old-fashioned dial. Now, no matter how fast you push the buttons, it'll put out that stream of pulses at 10 per second. And because you can finish pushing long before it can finish dialing, there has to be enough memory on board to store one whole number, area code and all. So don't be too impressed with last number redial. The memory had to be there anyway. You know, a funny kind of reversal of the way things usually go, something's lost by using space age electronics on the local loop. Electronic phones do draw current from the phone company when they're on hook enough to keep the electronics awake enough to recognize a ringing signal and to power whatever it is that makes that stupid sound that replaces the bell. The standby current on these things is low, but it, it varies from unit to unit. If enough of them are connected to the line, enough current can be drawn that the phone company might not be able to distinguish whether you're off or on hook. So now that it's up to you to decide what to connect to your own line, there has to be some sort of method of imposing order on the potential chaos. If you go wild with answering machines, auto dialers, auto answer modems, and extension phones, you can potentially mess up your local loop. So for that reason, the non-phone co company equipment is appearing with a load number. I have an answering machine that's an 11. Uh, the grand piano here is a 12. The cordless is a 15, and so on. It's up to you to add up the numbers and make sure they don't exceed 100. Otherwise, you don't say. You don't say. You don't say. Who was it? You didn't say.